today is going to be really interesting. I, I believe that we're going to be talking about something that we don't express enough of uh, and we don't show it the right way, particularly in our business, or our businesses, I should say. I was taking a look at some different things and I was having some different conversations about this topic, about, about gratitude. And the question is, you know, do we have the right frame of mind as business people uh, when it comes to this conversation about gratitude? Because uh, the truth is, um, sometimes we have to appreciate where we are to get to where we want to go. And the question is, uh, just do we show it enough for the people around us? And, and when we start putting these pieces together about success and where we want to take our business and where we want to take our life and the things that we actually want to accomplish, well, at the end of the day, wrap your brain around this. Your mama always taught you to say please and thank you, didn't she? Right? And just imagine or just just understanding how many doors that those little words can can open up for you. I mean, I, I believe we, we underestimate that. We grossly underestimate that. And, and when we think about our businesses, you know, what does that truly mean for us? Uh, and frankly, it, it probably doesn't mean enough because uh, we don't do it enough. And so in not doing it enough, the question becomes, if we did it more, how much more powerful would our businesses be? And so with that in mind, um, I took this picture, just a gratitude, the quality of being grateful or thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. And so th this conversation about gratitude really comes from a place of of showing appreciation and just reciprocating something that has been done for you. And so just a, just a quick run around the room, you know, is anybody doing anything special about the way that they show gratitude towards the people who they're in business with or just people, customers and clients in general? Is there anything special that anybody does to just show gratitude in that space? If y'all say nothing, we in trouble. Because oh, that just say the people who you do business with and do business with you, you don't even give a damn about them. You don't even say nothing. So, so that might be something for us to evaluate. I'm just being honest. That might be something for us to evaluate. You know what? My customers get cakes, cards, gift bags, gift cards. They get the works. And one time I, I didn't do it. And the lady said, Kate, where, where's the cake? And I left the closing and went and got that cake. For the you know because she was a referral person and and I noticed I can't shortchange nobody. You gotta you got if you went all out for one person you gotta go all out for the rest of them. I like that. I like yeah. that. Go ahead, Don. Don had a hand raised. Go ahead, Don. I I show appreciation in whatever way I feel fits their personality. I may buy champagne, I may do an Amazon gift card, but I am all about building relationships based on the uniqueness of a person. So that's the same way I show gratitude. I like that. Herman, you had your hand raised. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I, uh, for, for me, it, you know, for my referral partners, it's, you know, actively, you know, doing whatever uh, fits their business. So just adding value to a relationship. I believe that um, any relationship, mother, father, business partner, doesn't matter. Uh, you want to be able to bring something to the relationship. So, she miss, you know, she said cakes. You know, I, I may do point slides and stuff like that. So, okay, I like that. Anybody else want to share? Well, um, I come from a customer service background, and one form of gratitude I've learned to show your clients is anticipatory service. Um. And what I'm, I mean, really, I'm glad you said that. I was about to say, all right, you over my head now. So give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by anticipatory service is in the service industry I was in as a server, if you're paying your time, your client attention, where you watching them drink from afar and you see that they're drinking their drink and it's halfway down anticipatory services walking over there before they start to look around wondering 
where you at to refill my drink. So anticipating what someone needs ahead of when they know that when you know they're going to need it, that's one form of gratitude because that's showing the person that I'm truly thankful to be able to be in service with you at this time to the point where I'm going to know even what you need before you need it. Okay. And you, and then I like that. I like that. I like that. And the reason why I like that is that, um, you know, when we really think about that anticipatory service, you know, you, now you got me going, you got me on something now. <laughs> uh, you know, I, and I never thought about it that way. However, that's the type of service that we all like to receive when we're out. You know, when, when if if the if the server can hit your glass when it get half full, I know it's going to be a good night. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. When I don't have to look around, I know it's going to be a good night. So anticipatory service, I like that, and I think I believe that's something that we can all. That, that, wait a minute, let's unpack that for a second. How can we do anticipatory services in the real estate business? How can we show our clients gratitude before the transaction is over? Because so many of us, we wait until after the transaction is over, then we show our gratitude. How do we show gratitude before the transaction is over? And, and I'm, I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna hit this Hollywood, I mess with you, Holiday. I mean, <laughs> uh, how can we hit this? Because here's the deal, right? If we can focus in on this anticipatory service, right? Think about this. The client is expecting a certain level of service for us from the beginning to the end. And I, I believe that in our industry, we ignore this conversation about anticipatory service. Um, we ignore that conversation because here's what happens. You teach people how to treat you, right? And you treat people, right? how you want them to learn to expect the services from you, which is anticipatory service. So how do we as professionals, real estate professionals, or any other or financial services professional, whatever profession, you're in, how do you give that anticipatory service to show gratitude? How can we do that better? Anybody have any ideas? Because I, I think this is worth unpacking, Holiday. I really do. Audience. Um, I think that um, one way is understanding that cycle that you showed us, how the cycle of the sales process. Yes. And making sure that you internalize that and you be one step ahead of that curve. So if you know the cycle and you know what's coming, then you can be prepared for that situation, meaning you know what they don't know is coming. So therefore, keeping the line of communication open and explaining to them the questions that you know that they're going to have before they even ask them, that is one way we can show anticipatory service. So like when it comes to an inspection and they have to get it an inspection or something, you explain the process, talk to them as if they've never had an inspection before. So therefore, they... From the, you know, as as you schedule it, you know, so it's like, hey, I scheduled your okay. inspection, and this is what's going to happen during the inspection. You're going to, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. So I think the lines of communication and keeping them well informed throughout the whole process, I think, is a form of anticipatory service in the real estate industry and showing gratitude that you're thankful that they're working with you. See, I should have asked you that from the beginning. But I like that. I like that. I like that because a lot of us do that and we just don't really understand that's what we're doing. Go ahead, Don. Oh, I was so agreeing with him by um, over delivering okay. is the way to show gratitude. Okay. Under, under promise and over delivering. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. What, what else? Let me give you something that's really simple anticipatory service. I had to think about this sometime. How about we just take it to the basics and just showing up on time? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That's like really basic, but just showing up on time because guess what? Anticipatory service means that so many times we're on our appointments and when we're always five minutes ahead of our client, our client is anticipating when they get when we when they get to the location, you're already going to be there. Now, has this ever happened to you? You were late unexpectedly. 
And the client said, I was wondering what happened because you never, I never beat you here. You get what I'm saying? So what, but I mean, from a, and that's not the most positive way of anticipatory service, but what else can we do for something that's, that's like anticipatory service? I want you to know you started something holiday, but what else can we talk about as far as anticipatory services that would just wow our client to make them feel like I can't wait for what's next? Maybe setting it up that every time we speak to them, they know we give them the this is what's going to happen next conversation. So okay. there's an expectation of us sending them down the line. They know the, the path that's going to happen so they don't have to guess and feel uh, angst about what's going to happen next. I like that. And that's the same thing Hollywood says. So that, let's, let's put this in a different context then. Let's put this in a context and say, anticipatory service for us at a different level could be the way that we manage expectations. Right. And, and, and what I'm, and what happens is we don't understand that a lot of times we lose business or we, we don't have the best relationship with our clients because we don't manage the expectations that they have for us. So in that case, the anticipatory services. Right. They're not met to the level of what our client expects. The client is anticipating one thing and we're delivering something to the contrary. Well, well, I'm learning to do better. I have a client now that I'm going, they get a gift bag with me, with, with um, cards from me, telling them I'm looking forward to helping them find this house. Although we only bought the 25th house, I'm still nice. And <laughs> I haven't, you know, haven't said the wrong thing yet because they can buy whatever they want. Right. And, uh, you haven't used any explicit language yet, at least not to them. <laughs> no, but, but I think this weekend we found it. So, you know, I'm just improving. I, I'm just working on myself, not thinking about K and thinking about service first and, and, and uh, just making them happy, you know, and that's what I'm doing. Well, you know, K, we, we're all in therapy on that one. I just want you to know you're not alone. We're all in therapy on that. Look at Vinny. Vinny got that look on his face. Like, Hell yeah, you sure are right about that one. <laughs> so we all we all in therapy on that one, Kay. So and that's a good one. But what I want us to really, really, I want us to drill down on this. And thanks for that holiday. Anticipatory services. Um, you know, and, and just think of it like this. You know, is our audio matching our video? Right. Are we saying one thing and doing the same thing so that people consistently expect the delivery of services and goods as they got them the day before and the day at the day before and the day before and the day before. And so with that being said, I want us to think about something because I've heard this conversation about giving gifts um, and giving gifts. And I've heard someone say that. I give it, Dawn was saying she give it based on the personality. Kay was saying she gives like cakes and gifts. I want you guys to, I want everybody to think about this because this is something I learned from another agent. How about we set the tone and we not, I know everybody said, well, I want to give specialized services. How about we set the tone and give something consistently, right? They wrap your brain around this. We give one or two things consistently so that in that anticipatory service, if they got something, like, let's say if they were a referral and we give knives and blankets, right? And somebody in the client says, well, I got this beautiful knife set from the Paragon group. And when I use them and they start talking about this, so the person who is who we're servicing that was a referral, they are anticipating getting this beautiful knife set. Well, what if I don't give them the knife set and I give them a bottle of champagne, right? And then they look at this bottle of champagne and say, I don't want this. I'm going to drink this tomorrow and it's going to be gone. It doesn't mean anything to me. I wanted the knife set. And so my, my, just a quick question, like the best service providers give consistent services so that the clients know that at the end of this transaction, I am going to get this special gift 
even if, if the gift and even if you change gifts, put it in the same type of bag. There has to be something consistent about the service. So when we get into this conversation about anticipatory services, they're anticipating that blue bag. They're anticipating that knife set or they're anticipating that blanket. Whatever that you have something consistent in your business where people know they're going to get this thing at the end of the process. What do you guys think about that conversation? Well, for some reason, I knew you was going to call on me. <laughs> I, um, I mean, it goes back to a book I read, and I think most of you guys have read it called The E-Myth. Yeah. Um, it, it talks about expectations to be the same. And it talked about how you went to the hotel and you go have dinner, you come back, the fireplace is already lit, the room is already warm. And once you, you set that um, precedent, you want to always do that every single time. Because if the person comes one year and don't do it, and you don't do it, they're going to think that you didn't get them good service and they're not going to feel good about it. So, so basically... Um, I, what I always try to do is I do try to find out sometimes from the client, what is, what is they like, you know, mm-hmm. and I ask them and, and cause I give an example, one of my clients, I know she eats pretty uh, healthy. And so right. I wasn't sure I wanted to give her like a gift card for a restaurant, but I wasn't sure what to give her. So I asked her. And then once uh, she told me, I got her one that had like several different of those kind of foods that she liked. And she really seemed to really appreciate that. Right. And okay. So yeah, so that's the way I, I try to do. I try to find out sometimes what they like, but I like what you're saying about being consistent, especially right. if you refer somebody. Well, well, here's the deal. You can still give that same gift to that client, then just wrap it in the same package. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if you if if you're giving whatever you're giving, if you want to give different gifts to people, put it in a a Tiffany bag, a blue bag, or a green bag, a gold bag. Keep something consistent about it to heighten the anticipation. All of my clients, uh, hypothetically speaking, this is my signature hallmark is all of my clients get a gold bag. Although the contents of the gold bag is not the same, there's always something special in the gold bag. So I'd like to give you this special gold bag. And so you, you're, 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 the anticipation from the net, when they go to the next client, they say, well, when I dealt with David, David gave me a gold bag. I'm just excited to see what's going to be in your gold bag. You get them, you see where I'm going with that? Just, just food for thought. I mean, I'm just putting it out there. But our real, and our real conversation really still stems from the thing about the gratitude. Go ahead, Herman. Yeah, from that last comment you were just saying right now, it made me think of, uh, of branding. Um, that's, you know, it kind of goes into branding because you mentioned mm-hmm. the gold bag. You think of the Amazon box, you know, you get the same package in the same box. You think mm-hmm. of the Chick-fil-A service, it's always in the Chick-fil-A bag, right? So uh, it, it goes into branding as well as service and, you know, setting that setting that foundation, you know, on first call of like, this is what the experience is going to be, then delivering on that and then, right. you know, hitting them with the gold bag. There we go. The Herman Hudson bag. There we go. And so we got to think about that gang, you know, in that place of, of giving people gifts and showing gratitude in that way. Uh, what's the consistency? What's the consistency in our business? So I just want y'all to know, we just, we ran down this other rabbit hole. I want y'all to know this was like nowhere on my screen. However, it was great because I thought it was great anyway. I hope y'all thought it was great, but it was great because it just puts things into perspective, particularly since I learned a new word, anticipatory services. That's, I'm, I'm run out. Of, well, let me just deliver. Let me make sure that my anticipatory services are such that my clients really appreciate who I am. You got that holiday. <laughs> and then, even, you know, the beautiful part about these sessions, right, is that we're all in therapy. We're all getting something out of this. I get as much out of this as you get out of this because I'm here. I'm, I'm here as I'm here as a sponge. Right. And I'm here as the water, right? I'm here to saturate the sponge and I'm here to be saturated. So I just think it's beautiful that we can have this kind of dialogue and grow and learn from each other. And so, you know, getting into the meat of things of, you know, our dialogue here, I want you guys to, uh oh, there I am right there. You know, business, gratitude and business. 
we got that's something that we got to really take a look at and we got to be careful that in business we show gratitude uh, different ways and so showing gratitude towards employees or co-workers right and encouraging them to adopt the mindset well you know it will mend broken links it'll cause problems to go away within your business and when a person feels appreciated at work they subconsciously mirror they mirror it and then they act in efforts and again productivity and efficiency rises now this is not the words of emmerich peace this is the words of the great infinite wisdom source called google right <laughs> and it is something for us to unpack because if if you're an entrepreneur now, all of us were an employee at some point in time. And if we go back to the place of being an employee when we worked for somebody and they thanked us for what we did and we felt appreciated, it made it easier when the clock struck five that you would stay till 5.30, would you agree? And if you felt like that person didn't give a damn, damn, give a damn about you when the clock struck five, you was out the door at five minutes and 30 seconds. And so with us in the way that we are, we, we just have to make sure that the people that work around us, whether it be an employee, whether it be another entrepreneur, whether it's the loan officer, whether it's the, the, the home inspector, whether it's the title company, we've got to show gratitude. We have to show appreciation because I have a friend uh, George Frazier that says something, be careful that they told you step one today, they may be connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. And so, you know, the same way that you're on the top side one day, the next day, the transaction is not over. And this goes towards other real estate professionals also. Sometimes we get so caught up in our negotiation and we want to be ahead of everything and we want to be the boss and we minimize uh, and we diminish other people in the process. Well, the fact is a transaction lasts 45 days. I know you don't know nothing about that, Vinny. You in New York, y'all got 90 day processes, 120 day processes, right? So, so you diminish people in the first week of the, of the, of the transaction. But the transaction is not over yet. We get towards settlement, right? Let's just say you're the listing agent. You're the listing agent and you in control. You know how we pop in our collar right now as a listing agent. I got this. I'm the listing agent. I'm the big boss, right? And then you 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 drive the point home and negotiation and everything else, and you feeling good about what you did for your client, right? And you diminished the agent on the other end. Fast forward three weeks away from settlement, right? And your client's next move did not work out as they anticipated. And now you as the listing agent has to go back to the buyer's agent and say, my client can't settle next week. My client needs a two week, a three week extension. You get what I'm saying? So what happens in that case? You've diminished this person in the beginning of the transaction because you're the big boss popping your big collar, right? And now you've diminished this person. Now you got to eat humble pie and crow soup. And you got to go back and say, well, my client need, requires a three week extension. Tell me how that works out. Usually not in your favor. Exactly. My client is scheduled to go to settlement next week. We expect your client to show up at settlement. If your client does not show up at settlement, we're going to sue you for non-specific performance. We're not giving any extensions. Anybody ever had that happen before? Probably not. No, not none of y'all. Y'all don't diminish people. But <laughs> anyway, that, that's the reality of this business. So again, we have to show gratitude to all people. We have to treat people, all people well, because we have to keep that energy high, no matter where we are in our space, particularly in business. Um, show, show appreciation towards your clients. Expressing gratitude through words go a long way, but putting those words into action, it goes even further. And that's part of what we were talking about earlier, right? Um, there are many ways to say thank you and reward them for, for loyalty. And just across the board, you people appreciate you know personalized gifts. They appreciate impromptu gifts. Um, again, those kinds of touches always rate high with the customers and tend to get them to come back to you. So the question becomes, are we showing appreciation towards our client? And Kay was talking about, you know, this is 25 houses later, and she still has to show a client appreciation. Why does she still have to show a client appreciation? 25 houses later. 
because number one, she still wants to get a commission check. <laughs> I do. And, and two, you know, it's about the referrals, right? And we, we have to take a look at this and we talk, talk about showing our clients appreciation. I always tell clients, I don't look at them as one client. I look at them as, as multiple clients. I look at them as three clients, actually. And the reason why I look at them as three clients, because I tell them, I want your friends, your family, and everybody you know business. And I say that unapologetically. What I understand is if I never appreciate that client, that client is never going to refer me to the rest of the clients who I seek to for them to refer me to. And so again, we always have to show appreciation towards our clients. Or anybody do anything specific to show their clients appreciation throughout the process? Uh, I was thinking something a little different about that. Rick. Okay. I was thinking about using the analogy the young man made earlier okay. about anticipatory service. I go to yeah. the restaurant often, mm -hmm. and I think about times when I see my server that's swamped, and right. they can't give that service. So in your business, you got to know when you get busy and not getting that good service. And then mm -hmm. when, you know, besides jump on the sword, say sorry, and try to correct that. You know, okay. by hiring people, just recognizing my service is slipping. That's why you was talking. I was thinking about that as well, you know? Okay. And, and, and we, we, we got to be, we, we have to be in tune with our business. Just like you said, you know, we have to be in tune with our business to know when we're swamped and to know when we're getting in uncharted waters. And so with that being in mind, Benny, you know, that's one thing that we really have to talk about also, right? Um, we have to talk about, and I say this, I say this in different arenas all the time. You can't save your way to profitability. When you get swamped, you and when your business grows to a point, you have to understand you're going to have to spend some money on leverage, right? To make yourself more available. That's also showing your client appreciate, showing to appreciation towards your client. Because at the end of the day, right, if you can't be timely with your clients because you have too much business. However, you don't want to hire somebody or invest in another service or invest in something that's going to leverage you. Are you to me, you would be showing your clients lack of appreciation for giving you so much business. Does that make sense? Am I am I like off point? Do y'all get what I'm saying here? And, and what I'm what, what the point is, is that just always remember if you are purchasing more services, if you're spending more money on more services to help leverage your time, you're not truly spending money, you're making an investment in your business. And I believe that's another point that we have to be careful about in our dialogue, what we say, are, are we spending money or are we making an investment in our business? If you're spending money, then yes, you, need, you should be very cautious at what you do. If you're investing more money in your business, then you'd have to be more mindful of the way you invest your money. Just food for thought. Affirmation builds strong partnerships. You know, again, we're talking about gratitude here, right? Recognizing the good and affirming and loud and clear and loud and loud and clear is chief to strong relationships. A lot of times we don't recognize and affirm the good, which is showing appreciation, right? It also helps to connect with other entrepreneurs and build lasting relationships. Because in this space, right, of gratitude, when you invite other people into your space, what you're really essentially saying is that I'm grateful for the space that I have, and I'm willing to share this space with other people, right? Because no man is an island, right? And that same go with the business owner, right? And I, I believe that sometimes we get caught up, and we always say this thing, I'm self-made. I've heard people say this in different arenas, I'm self-made, I'm a self-made. Y'all know that's a bunch of BS, right? Because you can't make yourself. The truth is you can't make yourself because you can't make a dollar without somebody else making a penny. And so in this space of relationships and partnerships, we have to make sure that we show appreciation and we show gratitude to the people who are in our space that are helping us to earn a dollar, even though they're only earning a penny. And so again, we have to affirm those people who are in our space and show gratitude to those people that are in our space that are providing us with a service or a good or something that's helping to push our business. So many times we don't do that. And I just want you to wrap your brain around this, right? We have to be careful not to diminish the smaller people in our world 
that help us propel our world because the guy that's making a penny, I'm going to wrap your brain around this. And this is, so sometimes the guy making a penny, but you say, this guy's only making a penny and I'm making a thousand dollars, right? And we popping our column, we flossing that we making a thousand dollars and he only making a penny. What we don't understand is that we're making a thousand dollars off of that one transaction. He's making a penny off of a million people. Wrap your brain around that one. You get what I'm saying? So you can't diminish the person who's on that other end. We just have to make sure we have, we do affirmation and build strong partnerships no matter where people are because the same people that you meet coming up, same people that you meet coming back down. And so, again, again, and with when we were talking about, when I was talking about these conversations, when we put the, the flyer out, we're talking about grateful, gratefulness and productivity. And this is, again, this is from, a, from another source. A culture of gratitude plays a critical role in the workplace. It predicts higher job satisfaction. Practicing gratitude at work make your coworkers feel more grateful about their job in general. Grateful coworkers tend to focus more on the things they appreciate at work rather than those that annoy them. Let's chop that up for a minute. I, I want to park right there for a moment because that, that, that resonated with somebody. So who did that resonate with? But does that does that does that resonate with you guys? I mean, when we when we talk about this, right? When when people are happy, they don't. Okay, Don, go ahead because I want you to get that out. Okay, so an example of how I use this at a previous job, I worked at a radio station and I hated the job. However, I just paid attention to the things that I enjoyed, and I expressed gratitude that those that helped me enjoy my favorite parts and it helped mm -hmm. me um last a lot longer in that position than i would had i not had a grateful heart okay okay and and and, and that's real i have so many times we we we've, we've been engaged we we have some clients right we have some clients that we just don't like let's be real we've all had some clients that we just don't like but here's the deal the, the client is your success with that client is directly proportioned to the amount of income you're going to make that next week or the next month. We get it. And so we like the client just enough to get the settlement. We don't care if we ever see that client again. And, but the truth is um, they annoy us. Or we're grateful for the commission check. So we ignore certain parts about that client. And, and so with that, when we be when we can focus on the gratefulness of what the byproduct of dealing with people or situation is, it just makes things all so better. But the truth is, the real conversation about this one is we have to establish a culture of gratitude around us and our business and the people who we associate with. Even though you may not like that client, you're grateful for that client because what? They produce another commission for you. And so no matter where we see things, we always have to establish a culture of gratefulness in our workspace and find the bright spot. And so here's the deal with, with the, and this is just some research, like psychologists did some research and it shows strong evidence of both uh, feeling and expressing gratitude positively influences our emotions and health and can inspire those uh, results in others. And so just, it's one of those things I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, right? I'm a, um, you ever looked at somebody and they're just always smiling, right? And they just smile. You can't help but smile. You can't even frown when they smile at you, right? Because they say your smile is infectious and it makes other people smile. It's the same thing. It's the same thing about that. It's just that positive energy and gratitude is that positive energy. And said so one study showed that we express gratitude to our partners and the partners are more likely to feel positive towards communicating towards us and communicate about concerns in the relationship. And, and just think about it. Whenever you're dealing with someone and they're, they're more positive, you're more apt to bring challenges to that person that you might be having with that person or in a situation. And then the people who always exude that negative energy, you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to engage in them with them. And, and no matter what the situation is, you will avoid even having a conversation with them many times, even if it's a positive, even if it's a positive conversation. And to take that to a different place, I want you guys to wrap your brain around this. 
for me, a lot of things that I do are around food, right? And if I have an event, I always have some food there. In my office, in my market center, we have more food events than any market center, any office in the country. You know why? Because you don't eat with people who you don't like. You don't, I don't care where they invite you to take you. It could be your favorite restaurant in the world. If you don't like them, you're not going to eat with them. Yes. And it's the same thing with, with negative people. When people are negative, you would rather not be in their space. And even if just to say, I want you to wrap your brain around this. Your group of people going out, right? And there's this one negative person that's going. Many times you won't even go with the four people you like just because the one negative person is going. And then if we talk about another study, study showed how managers who express gratitude towards their employees generated 50% higher productivity. So if we're not showing gratitude to our customers, clients, service providers, you know, what are we doing to our businesses? And then sometimes some of us in a lead generation mode, we're in a lead generation mode and throughout the day, we have not expressed any gratitude for anything that's happened for us throughout the day. And then we pick up the phone and we lead generate. And we wonder why we can't convert any potential customers to clients. Is it because we haven't fully appreciated or shown our gratitude for where we are at this point that we can't even convey the right message or the right energy to the person on the other end of the phone. Just food for thought, you know, your energy transfers from one room to the next room. And the reason why your energy transfers from one room to the next room, because you are your energy, you are your energy. So the question becomes in your life, are you bringing the energy that you desire to be or the energy of the things that you desire to have, are you truly taking that energy with you in the most positive way? And I've heard this before, be the light coming into the room as opposed to being the light leaving the room. You know what that means? What that means is that people should be happy to see you come into the room rather than happy to see you leave the room. And so that's all about gratitude, that's all about being positive, that's all about being who we, be authentically showing up as who we should show up as a grateful soul. That makes me, Matt, that makes me think of a quote from Napoleon Hill, um, uh -huh. your attitude, and I try to ex exemplify that as much as possible, so you always see me smiling no matter what. Right. Um, your attitude determines your altitude. Mm. Okay. So that's that's always keep it positive, always keep it upbeat, and it, and it can control how far you can go. And, and so, and I love that. So what, this is what I want to do. I want to open this up for a minute about gratitude because y'all kind of quiet. Like some, I think some of y'all might be numb because you figured you don't show enough gratitude. And some of y'all might be saying, this doesn't apply to me. I'm grateful all the time. So let's open this up to just in the context of how we relate to other people, how do we show our gratitude? So let, let me give you, let me give you mine. When sometimes people come to how you doing today, Emmerich? I'm living the dream. You know, and that's my response every day. I'm living the dream, but damn, nobody can be that happy. You, how are you living the dream? Cause I hit the lottery today. Every day I wake up, I hit the lottery. You get what I'm saying? Because it, every day I have an opportunity to create the mega million jackpot. It just depends on how I'm going to use my time. And so how do you show up in your gratitude? How do you show up in your space of gratitude? Give me some feedback because this is important because right now this is a thing where we're helping other people understand how they may be able to show up a little better in their space of gratitude. But by the same token, it gives us an opportunity to have a conversation about it. Mr. Emmett, I was gonna show you every, I have a book and it says start each day with a grateful part. And every day I put a word that I got from the Bible in, in this book. So, cause I'm so grateful that I can do what I, I do. I am, I am extremely blessed. And uh, I'm grateful because before I started in real estate, I got sick and um, right before I was gonna take the exam, 
I didn't know that I had diabetes. My blood sugar was 1,003 when I got to the hospital. And they told me, had I not gotten there then, I wouldn't have made it through the night. And so with that, you know, you lose your eyesight, you can't see and all that kind of stuff for a couple of months. But my real estate school, when I could see again, they let me come back. I passed the exam and Keller Williams called me. And I felt like I, I, I'm blessed to have been able to live through that and then get with a company that put God first, people second, and teach you all the time. So I'm grateful and thankful every day, you know, and to learn and help families and to be blessed. I'm just blessed. Okay. I like that. I like that. So how else do we walk? Look at Kay. Look, Kay, you'll give us a whole sermon in a minute. I saw it coming. I'm sorry. I said I was going to shut no, up. No, don't apologize. No, no Kay, Kay, don't apologize. You know I'm going to pick with you, Kay. Don't apologize. That's I was about real. to pass the virtual plate. <laughs> <laughs> I was sick, y'all. <laughs> right. Don, you had your hand raised, Don? Oh, well, I guess my energy was strong because, uh, yes. Um, I practice a grateful heart every day by filling my cup. And I always start the day with the simplest prayer. Thank you. I like that. I like that. Anybody else? I have a saying, not similar to yours, but it's around the same context. Every morning, no matter who greets me before 12 a.m., if I hear good morning, holiday, whatever, how are you? I'm going to say, hey, man, I woke up this morning. I'm doing well. And then that usually say, hey, man, that's a great way to look at it. And I tell them, hey, it beats the alternative. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And so anybody else want to share how they show gratitude during the day or any special way of showing gratitude? I have a gratitude journal every day. Ooh, every day. You, come on. You see, you ain't right. You just read that line on the screen, aren't you? <laughs> no. And in all honesty, I, I have to say being in this journal and doing this, especially okay. when times were tough was great. I went okay. through, I didn't realize three months where I hadn't written in my journal uh-huh. and I could see the effects in my life and I could see it in my business and being back to it has made such a difference. So yes, no, got to write it down. Got to be grateful and thankful. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to share? Yeah. I, w- I wanted to piggyback on what, what, uh, uh never just said, um, that's huge. I had never heard of that before, um, writing in a journal. So I'm going to steal that practice. Um, cause I would admit and say that I'm, I'm not consistent in the gratitude piece, but, uh, when I am, uh, the way I'd show it is just asking somebody else how they're doing and not right. just like, you know, not just like, you know, a flippant way of how you're doing, but just really ask how they're doing to start a conversation. So, but yeah, never, that's great. Um, that's a great, great practice. I'm, 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 I got a, a, a 500 page journal right here. So yeah, there that's, we go. that's amazing. Okay. And, and, and coming back to Neva, you so smart. I know you saw that on the screen. You just picked up. Neva, sorry about that. No, you good. Yeah, so Neva says, call me whatever you want. Just spell my name right on the check. <laughs> so the, the, here's the deal, right? Um, when we start talking about this, you know, keep a daily gratitude journal, and they say research suggests that, you know, just spending five minutes a day writing down what you're grateful for increases your sense of well-being by 10%. That's one of the things like on my team, the Paragon group on our team, every morning when we have our meeting, we go through daily gratitude. And, and it seems like if it seems like a drill or if it just seems like a drill or exercise and you're going through the motions, um, I would question you as to what your impending level of success will be. And the reason why I'm saying it that way is because if you can't express something that you're grateful for every day, then do you, re- do you truly appreciate life? Because life is a gift. Just so we're clear, life is a gift. You didn't have to wake up this morning. You didn't. And since you did, I would strongly suggest that you great that you be grateful for that, and you figure out how you're going to make today better than yesterday, which means that you're ultimately growing as a person. And I want you to wrap your brain around this in this whole gratitude conversation. 
because I saw something the other day in a, you know, Facebook show shit. Facebook can, can teach you all kinds of positive things and they can teach you all kinds of not so positive things. And so it was talking about grief and it was talking about grief and sorrow. And I'm just going to use this. I want you guys to wrap your brain around this. In grief, right? Like in grief, when somebody really close to you died, right? Grief is this big, huge ball. Would you agree? It's this big, huge ball, and you can't hardly see around it because you're so grief stricken by the loss of your loved one. Over time, does the grief shrink, right? Or do you grow as a person? That was deep. What it really said was that the grief doesn't shrink. You just grow so much as a person that the grief doesn't even matter as much as it did before. However, it's still the same size. The grief is still the grief. You've just grown as you've just grown as a person. And I thought that was so deep. But, and so when we look at it that way, uh, the things that just wrap your brain around this. I know some of y'all been, I don't know about y'all, but I've been broke before. I, I've been broke. I've never been poor, but I've been broke. I've been real broke. I'm talking about like put a $2 worth of gas in the car so I can drive 20 miles to make another $2 to go another 20 miles. You get what I'm saying? That, hey, that's you had $2 right there. in the car? Yeah, $2 in the <laughs> gas tank. No, I said, but you had $2 in the car. <laughs> <laughs> right and, and we all been at that point and at that point i don't know about we all i'm just saying me i don't know if i'm talking about y'all and when i was that broke right a hundred dollars may as well have been a million dollars you get what i'm saying when you that broke a hundred dollars may well be a million dollars and so at that moment you're grateful for the two dollars now when you get that hundred dollars and the hundred dollars it's like having $2. Are you still grateful for the $2? Wrap your brain around that one. Because sometimes we forget where we came from. We forget about when we only had the $2. Because now we got $100 that feels like $2. And we go and eat dinner. We go and eat dinner at Nobu over at Malibu holiday. You know what I mean? Where, where you eat a dinner, and I'm saying this, he laughing, you eat dinner, and dinner for two people is $350. And that's only one drink. And, wait a minute, and you're not even full. You're still looking for the rest of the food, right? And I, and I did that one time, and I was so grateful because I was able to take my wife there. I was so grateful for being able to go there. But I, and I felt a certain way about it after I left there because I said, after I wasn't satisfied, and I said, that was wasteful. I could have went to Roscoe's, right? I was in California. I could have gone to Roscoe's and been full for $40 and been happy. I spent $350 to look at the water and sit around some shishi foo foo people, <laughs> right? But the question was, did, was that operating my best resource? I was more grateful eating the Roscoe's than I was eating the Nobles. So what I'm saying about this thing is keep that gratitude journal, write it down, what you're grateful for. You gotta be grateful for the $2, the same way you're grateful for the $100 and keep track of it. But don't lose, fo don't lose, so don't lose focus. It's the little things in life that provide the biggest impact most of the time. Here's hey, another, I yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. go. I'm just going to say, like, back to the journal, and it ties into what you're saying, because mm -hmm. you were saying, be grateful for the little things, um, and you were yeah. talking about grief, and um, just a little bit of transparency. I really stopped journaling, and I haven't really talked to anybody about this, but my dad died around the same time I stopped journaling, mm -hmm. and um, but I realized journaling and and being grateful for the little things sometimes mm -hmm. are a lifesaver, because when you're dealing with grief and dealing with different things, all you may have to go on is that small thing. Hey, I'm grateful for the cup of coffee I had this morning. You may not be able to pull out anything else, but that one thing might be the thing that gets you to the next thing. Right. Okay. Can I share with you what I'm grateful for today? You can I share? Today? Sure. You can. You, I like Facebook classes, as anybody know. I love it. So one day I caught 
this um, Facebook rock star real estate. And his name was Barina. And he had a contest. And I won the contest. You, you win a book. You win the book. And I won the 12 weeks. Yeah, and he signed it. Hope this will help make 2021 awesome. Barino. I picked up Facebook today. He died. And I just could not believe it. I, I just got this, say, two months ago from him. And I, I'm just, I'm just grateful. Right. And, and, and there's the little, and that was something that happened for you that he didn't have to do. You won the book. Now, the question becomes, that book is a $19 book. By the way, it's a great book. It's a $19 book that will change your life. I was just about to say, I literally just finished reading it today. Anybody that follow me on Facebook, I started it last week and said that I will be done by tomorrow. I finished it today. I cannot wait until Monday to start implementing this book. Treat yourself, Miss K, to this book. It, it really will change your life if you implement it. There we go. So there's another nugget in here. My, my whole team and my market center, we moved to the 12-week year. We moved to just dividing our lives up into a 12-week year. It increases productivity. Just so we're clear, I know this is that's a little, let me get off this rabbit hole because we could go down that book and be in a totally different rabbit hole. But pick up that book. But Neva, thank you so much for sharing and being transparent um, and talking about that daily journal because that's critical. It's critical to us thinking differently and appreciating where we are. Um, buy a box of thank you cards and send them out regularly, right? We're talking about more money and more business through gratitude. How many of us actually send out thank you notes and thank you cards regularly to people who are in our sphere? If you don't, you should. You know, you can do it for no reason. If it, just imagine the impact, right, on your client. If you send your client, say, say today is Monday, but well, today is Thursday, the 9th of September. And I want to thank you for being my client. I truly appreciate the wonderful transaction that we had three years ago. How would that make your client feel? What if we did that on a regular basis, just send out thank you cards? Well, I do that with, with gift cards to their favorite pizza place for their kids. Well, you know, you, and you know, Kay, I'm going I'm to tell you this, and people appreciate that. If you didn't send a gift card, if you just send a thank you card, you know what? They would appreciate it as much as they appreciated that pizza. Do you know that? Because no, I want you to just wrap your brain. Most people aren't used to feeling, seeing, or getting, or people doing random acts of kindness. They're just not. And so, again, we're talking about more, more money, more business through gratitude. So here's another way of more business through gratitude. There is a person in your life, somebody that's associated with you somewhere, who you want to get to know them better. And they're at another level different than you at a higher level. If you really want to meet that person, if you really want to take that person to lunch, right? Call that person, introduce yourself to that person, right? And let them know, just say to them, uh, I'm a, let's, let's do a little a script real quick. I ain't going to pick on you, Vinny. Let's do a script real quick. Hey, Mr. Taylor, can you do a script with me really quick? All right. Okay. Here we go. I'm glad you said yes. They say you shouldn't call on people, but when you come in here in this room, we all free birds around here. David McMillan just said, I'm glad he didn't call me. That's all. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, hey, Michael, the, I'm, I, you're at another a different level than I am, and mm -hmm. I aspire to meet you. Right. And I want to uh, at some point in time, I want to take you to lunch and have a great conversation with you. Right. So you ready? Yeah. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Hey, is this Michael Taylor? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Hey, Michael, this is Emmerich Peace. And, you know, Michael, this is as I want you to know. I have been admiring the way you do business for years. And I want to thank you for being such a professional. And the reason why I'm calling today, Michael, I know this sounds crazy and off the cuff, 
But Michael, I know that you do a phenomenal amount of business. And what I want to ask you today, Michael, is how can I help you and your business to grow your real estate team? Well, okay. Thank you for asking. And I appreciate you recognizing, you know, my hard works. Um, I mean, if you, what area are you in? If you know anybody that has any needs, you know, maybe we could help each other that way. Well, let me tell you, Michael, I'm in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and um, I operate a market center in Keller Williams. And I have roughly about 610 agents. And what I want to know is just how can I help you? I know it's a, I know it's an oddball question. You don't get it that often. People always call in to ask or something. However, I'm calling you to ask you, how can I help you? Yes, you really have caught me off guard. So I really can't think off the top of my head uh, with anything. But um, that's something to definitely keep in mind. But I, I know that you have a business in your city, Michael, right? Do you get yeah. many clients that come to Washington, D.C.? Or do you get many clients that move to your area from Washington, D.C.? I have a couple. Um, don't have very many that I could just recollect at the moment. Okay, so this is what I want to do. If at any time you have a client that's moving to Washington, D.C., you know, I would be more than happy to send you a relocation package so that you can talk to them about how wonderful it is to relocate to Washington, D.C. So if ever you have a customer client that's moved to Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, feel free to pick up the phone. I'll get you a relocation package. Whether you send us the referral or not, I just want to make sure that you can service your clients at a higher level. Would that be okay? Yes, I think that would be very beneficial. Okay, great. What about this one? What about if I circulate your name and your business throughout my market center? So if anyone has a client moving to your town, they think of you first for the referral. Yes, that would be great. Okay, beautiful. So and, and, and I, that's, what, that's my pledge to you. If you have a client moving to Washington, D.C., just give me a call. I'll make sure we put together a relocation package so that you can better educate your client on moving to the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. And then the second thing, like I said, I'm going to really circulate your name to, you know, my agents and my market center to make sure that they, if they have a referral coming to your town, that you're the person of choice. And that's my commitment to you. Wow, that's a very pretty big commitment. And I really thank you for that. OK, How can so, I help you? Yeah, well, let's see. It, it's. It, but see, now you just flipped that around on me, Mike. It wasn't really about you helping me. It was really about me helping you. But, you know, now that you talk about it, I, like I said, I've been admiring you from afar in your business. And I was just wondering, I'll be in your town next month. I was just wondering if maybe we could just take the time to have some coffee, you know, and just just talk for a couple minutes. Just share your wisdom for maybe 25, 30 minutes. Would that be okay? Sure, sure. No problem at all. As long as you know, get enough notice. I love to meet with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do tomorrow, is it okay if I call your assistant and get on your schedule and then you just let them know that I'm going to be calling them tomorrow and I just get on your schedule so we can just sit down for 25 minutes and I'll, I'll be there in two weeks next Thursday, And as a matter of fact, and maybe I can get on your schedule then? Okay, that, that sounds fine. Okay, great, Michael. And then, like I said, you're going to be getting some referrals from my agents because I know they have people that come to your town all the time. And I just appreciate you picking up my call and taking the time to talk to me. All right. Well, you're very welcome. All right. Thank you. And I, I'm going to send you my card so you remember who I am when you hear my voice and my name come up again. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Did y'all did y'all get that? Yes, I want a replay. <laughs> yeah, you smooth, man. You real smooth. <laughs> no, but, yeah. Picking up what you're dropping. This but the I whole think point. That's funny. I'd say that sounds like the conversation I should have been calling you with. <laughs> <laughs> As buddy, I started typing it. You start talking too much. I was about to type everything you said and put it in the chat to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but it is, it's real, though. It's a real conversation. My point is is in that place of the, us talking about relationship building, we have to come in gratitude. We have to come from contribution, right? And so many times we're in our relationship building and building our business and, and coming through gratitude. The gratitude is that I'm grateful for the things that I have in my space 
and I'm willing to share them with someone else. In return, it causes people, it forces people to let their guard down and be more receptive to even having a conversation with you so that you can even talk business. So many times we want to talk business before we talk about contribution. So just keep that in mind. Talk contribution before business. Did you did you feel that, Mike? For real? Did you did you really feel that? Yes, I did. I, I mean, like I say, when I was listening to it, I say, "Wow, this is." <laughs> I could see the whole reversal of of the script being, you know, towards you because I watched you for years as well. You know, all the things I got from you. So I thought that was a pretty different being able to hear it come from you. But hey, nice. Well. Uh, I like how your whole intention when you called was to get coffee, mm -hmm. but you came from a point of value and you offered so much value that in essence, it was like a cup of coffee. He felt like that's the least he could do. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, and, and you had to figure out, you had to figure out in your space, how you can bring value to people so that they feel like you're really doing them a favor by sitting with them. Because here's the deal. The thing that people, the thing that most people never get is they never get a conversation where people call them and ask them, what can I, how can I help you? Every, just think about it. When your phone ring, right? Your phone ring, you be looking at your phone like this. Look, and there's no, you look at your phone, you pick your phone, you be like, damn. I know they're going to ask me for something. I don't even want to pick the phone up. Then you pick up the phone and then, be, hello? Yeah, this Emory, can I borrow $50? You'd be like, damn, I knew I shouldn't have answered that phone. But then when the phone rings and somebody calls you and say, you know, hey, this is Emory. Um, I just want to know how can I help you today? That totally disarms the whole phone call because people are not used to people calling them and asking, how can I help you? Just food for thought. Don't want to beat it into the ground. However, just remember, come from contribution to grow your business. Uh, find ways to discuss, you know, what you appreciate, what you appreciate about your colleagues and clients. That flows right into that, right? And again, it's coming from contribution. It's showing gratitude towards the people that are already in your circle. And we talked about that a minute ago with the thank you card, right? You, you tell them, Today is June, the day is Thursday, you said the day is September 9th. And I just want to thank you for being my client three years ago. Mm -hmm. Might that get you a couple of referrals? Absolutely. And so the other thing that we want to think about is this. You know, you might think that wealth building is about money. It's also, you know, it's about mindset. It's about mindset. And this is an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude can help shift your mindset from scarcity to abundance. And a lot of times we don't pay enough attention to the gratitude or the things that we can be grateful for, the things that we can share, which is coming from abundance, right? And so when you come from, you shift that mind shift from coming from scarcity to abundance, it helps you spend less time uh, and feel better. And then actively participate in gratitude helps you realize how much, just how much more you have and, and just how much that you're living in the space of, of excess. On the flip side of that, a scarcity mindset is focused on what's missing and you always want more. And, and a lot of times in that space of scarcity, we're so busy trying to hold on to what we have, we can't get more. So here's the deal. Like, uh, I hope y'all can see my arms. When we talk about operating from scarcity, right? And I got a, I got, I got, I got a million dollars and I hold this million dollars like this and I'm trying to hold on to every dollar of that million dollars. What we don't understand that the million dollars is only a tool to help us to get the $10 million if we just open our mind up and we just are willing to share what we have, and I didn't say give it all away. That's not what I said. I said we open up to share and be in an abundance mindset to just push ourselves to a different place. And, and what happens is, I want y'all to think about, I don't know where y'all came from. I know where I came from. But my mother was so busy 
making her best attempt to pay the bills. Sometimes she didn't have enough money to do other things. But however, the fact is she understood at some point she did have more money to do other things. She just had to look at the things that she wanted to do differently. Is that, is that registering? I mean, let me give you this. Poor people are poor for one or two reasons and rich people are rich for one or two reasons. Poor people are poor because either they couldn't afford to take a chance or they were scared to take a chance. And rich people are rich either because they weren't scared to take a chance or they could afford to take a chance. Either way, it just depends on how you look at it. And so in that scarcity mindset, just to remember there's always something there. The fact is, is when you have an abundant mindset, you realize your opportunities are limitless. You don't feel the comp, you don't fear competition or think that there's ever, that, that, that you don't think there's ever enough. You think that there's always more than enough. Wrap your brain around that, right? And then focusing on abundance can help you attract more money and have a healthier, uh, mindset about money because at the end of the day when we start talking about abundance we have to remove this conversation about need right and that that's something that i'm working on personally in my life and, and i and i avoid it like the plague the word need wrap your brain around this the universe the world god source or however you want to term it is so abundant that everything that you quote unquote need is already in the world. You do know that, right? There's nothing new in the world. Everything you need is in the world. The fact is you just have to figure out how to access it. And my friend Travis Lee, through some book that he read, he said something, he said, there's not a lack of resources. There's a lack of resourcefulness. There's not a lack of resources. There's a lack of resourcefulness. So we don't really need anything. We require it and we just have to figure out how to access it. And so when we get into this abundance mindset, great, when, you, when, you, when you get into that abundance mindset, it's about being grateful for where you are. And then you're, in, you're grateful for where you are and then you just expand on your gratefulness. And as you expand in your gratefulness, you automatically flow into this abundance mindset to understand that there's always more than what you have. And the question becomes, how do I access that more? And I, I didn't say be greedy, right? I said, think of abundance and it's two different conversations. And so with that being in mind, we just got to take a look at this whole conversation of are we operating from an, a, a scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset? And typically when you can't express gratitude, that's because you're thinking of things on a small scale which puts you into that scarcity mindset. When you can start appreciating and, and, and living in that space of gratitude, it just opens your mind up to always look for a little more. So what happens is when you focus on gratitude and enjoy and appreciate what you have, you start to realize that you need even less than what you thought, right? And just in, in, in the access of what we have in today's society, it conditions us to really Seek more and more. I want y'all to think about this. I don't know about, again, I might be telling on myself, right? But some of us in our environments, we didn't even know we were broke. We didn't know our family didn't even have money. All right, all right, city folks, I'm getting ready to pull this out of you. Catch one, catch all. Red light, green light, right? Freeze tag. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You get what I'm saying? We didn't have no money. We just invented a game. <laughs> right? We, we didn't know, we didn't have no sorry. We didn't have no trouble. Uh, the only time we got Monopoly was at Christmas. You get what I'm saying? My point being is that, you know, you were happy with that little bit that you had and you didn't know that there was something bigger. Once you understood that there was something bigger, a mind expanded will never contract back to the same size. And that's what this conversation of gratitude is about. Gratitude is about making sure you understand that what you have, it may be enough. However, you're grateful and there's a desire that you could want more, which brings you to the place of abundance, just food for thought. And so with that being in mind, you know, again, 
when you focus on gratitude and enjoy and appreciate what you have now, you start to realize that you need less than you thought. Right, let's, let's talk about this conversation about gratitude, abundance, scarcity. Let's open that up for a minute because I, I believe that's a really good crime. That's a really great conversation to have, particularly coming out the fact that us, that us city dwellers that really didn't have much, I'm sure people from the country, they had games that they, they played too. They might, they played cow tipping. I, I never figured that one out. I had no desire to run through the farm and tip over cows while they were asleep standing up, but I understand as a game. Okay. So let's talk about that scarcity and abundance and, and just being grateful for what we have. Hey, I'm Rick. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> so put that on the table, scarcity and abundance, you know, be grateful. Yeah. The, the whole conversation about gratitude reminds me of if anybody has um, read the, the book, The Law of Attraction, or read, um, you know, saw the movie, uh, there is one, one thing that um, I definitely believe in is the more gratitude I express, the more that I attract of the things that are really great. So to me, gratitude is kind of like a magnet for just more abundance and more happiness and more joy. Um, just having that, having that gratitude. And I've, I've just come to learn that no matter what the circumstance, no matter what's going on, I can always find something in any situation to be grateful for. And I think that also, um, for me, it changes the outcome of things because of the way that, um, you know, just my mindset is always focused on gratitude. I even sign all of my, you know, in my signature, I always say with gratitude, because that's just a constant reminder for me to be in that state of gratitude at all times. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to share? Um, I think gratitude can be associated with one of the previous conversations that you that we've had when you were discussing finding beauty and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to be in a, I guess, gra a gratitious state to even be able to see beauty in everything because if you're walking around and you're not grateful for life and you're not grateful for the things that you have then you're not going to be able to see the beauty in things okay. so i think that conversation ties in to to what you're talking about um <clears throat> with that you know just finding the beauty in everything so i definitely mm -hmm. tied those two conversations together beautiful anybody else want to share I was just thinking about telling you about the fact that I've gone from the projects to the White House. Right. I'm grateful for what, what I've been able to do in my, this life of mine. But there's a lot of me that I need to express that I don't want to give it all to you one time. But one thing I wanted to remind you of, if you ever ask me what I'm doing, I always say unbelievable. And I leave it up to you to decide what it is, be it good or bad. Okay. I like um, that. Okay, thanks, Holly, 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 Holiday Hollywood. <laughs> I like that, Holly. I like Hollywood. I like that a lot. But I just want to share. Uh, I'm from I'm from the country, and and Rick, and I don't think it was any different for the country people as the city people. We we were we we didn't know we were broke, but we made the best of things, and we were taught to make the best of things, and and that was you know I I never felt poor at all. And, uh, I didn't say I didn't say poor. I said broke. Okay, broke, right? Broke, broke is a state of your bank account. Poor is a state of mind. Okay, and yeah, and I'm just saying because I think you said somewhere in your talk I thought you mentioned something about poor, not in that context, but you mentioned okay. something about poor. And I just want to say thank you guys, thank you, and thank the rest of the people on the thing because about a week ago, my manager, we had a we have our meeting on Monday nights, and she mentioned doing a journal, a, a gratitude journal. I wrote notes down and everything to remind myself to do that. And guess what? I didn't do it. But to hear it again today, that, that just reiterated that I need to do that and really start doing my gratitude journal. 
and make sure that I do that every single day. And I want to just thank you guys for bringing that up again, because I put me some notes here. I got a note on my computer to make sure yeah. I do that. And I just want to thank you guys for that. Okay, cool. And Amy, I have to get ready to go. I don't mean to cut nobody off, but I just couldn't let this go since we didn't meet last week without saying, especially since we're speaking on gratitude, I'm grateful for you. Um, I was at Mega Camp in Las Vegas um, two weeks ago, and it was being a newer agent and soaking up all this knowledge. It was great to hear it, but the whole thing was purposed around living with intentionality and purpose. And the whole time, I couldn't not stop thinking about you because the very first session I attended was on intentionality and the next one was on purpose. So just knowing that the whole mega camp was about that, it's just, it made me, I was pissed you weren't here last week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just to be perfectly honest, you saw, I even messaged you like, hey man, what's going on? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> because I really just was in such a state of gratitude sitting at mega camp, knowing that I am listening to wise counsel when I talk to you and I listen to everyone on these meetings. I really look forward to seeing all y'all faces every Thursday. So Thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta go get the kids. They back in school now, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Go ahead, Herman. I know you've been you've been trying to hit that you've been hitting that talk button. Go ahead, oh yeah, Herman. yeah, yeah. No, no, no doubt. That's that's good stuff, man. I, I, it sounds like he was providing that anticipatory service, so he was looking for you <laughs> from last week. That's what it was, man. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I compare I compare this whole conversation today to traveling, man, because you know oh, my wife was in the military, we went east coast, west coast, and uh, leaving leaving uh, Texas from where I met uh, was the first time I, I had seen. You know, we went to Quantico, you know, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, right? So that was the first time I seen my folks in in successful positions without doing street activities. So uh, traveling gives you that perspective of being grateful for which, where you come from, but then also that, that uh, inspiration to do better. So, uh, you know, I guess the challenge or, the, uh, or what I'm taking away from it is to, to travel every day. Uh, obviously, you're not when we're leaving the country every day, but traveling to a place that's, uh, you know, maybe uncomfortable for you or a place you hadn't even, maybe even a business you've never been into and just finding mm -hmm. something in there to be grateful for or a piece of knowledge to go away with. So, um, yeah, I kind of liken this whole conversation to traveling and and just getting that perspective on gratitude. So I appreciate it as well. Okay, cool. And and and, and we just here just chopping it up, man. It, this is uh, for, it's just a labor of love for us and just good people having great conversation. That's what this is about. So come on back to the room. So who else, anybody else wanna share? Um. I just want to share right before this Zoom started, I got a call from a young lady who has a friend who just finished real estate school and he was talking to the people at Keller Williams and she wanted me to talk to him. And, and I just was telling her about this class, telling him how when he if he joins Keller Williams, even if he doesn't, he needs to join this class because I make it a point. I don't work in the beauty shop. I don't do anything but come in here and wait for this class because I grow. This, this building in here, this became because of what you were saying. I have a community center for people in the community to come here and have repasses and have whatever they wanna have in here if they can't play, afford any place else because of what you were saying. See, I, can't, I don't have no money like y'all, but we can give. My family is a giving family, and I, I'm trying to, you know, just trying to give because I'm grateful. And and that's grateful a great for you and Miss Pat. I don't know what Miss Pat like. It. I want to send her something because I'm so grateful. No, don't send it to her. Send it to me. I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that. Thank you. And again, this that's this is what we do. Anybody else want to share? Hey, I just, I thought about something while this was going on. You know, every day I try to wake up and just be grateful for the physical and mental capacity to be able to do whatever I decide to do. Now, what I don't do, that's on me. I can't put it on anybody else, but right. I woke up 
capable with the ability to do so. But mm -hmm. I had a conversation this morning with my sister about my niece that got upset that she missed out on the barbecue this past Monday for the holiday. And so once we knew she missed out and wasn't invited and we accidentally forgot to put in a group meeting, everybody apologized to her and expressed we were sorry and we were going to make sure she knew the next time. But we came up to the conversation that a person who just looks, an ungrateful spirit who just looks for negative is no matter what you do, they're going to always look for negative. And anybody that has a grateful or thankful spirit is always, you can put them in the smallest place with not a lot and they're always going to find something to be grateful or, or be positive about in that atmosphere. So that's kind of what it just clicked back in my head listening to y'all. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. So let me give y'all something. It, going once, going twice. I came in late. That's However, okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. Like, like a friend of mine said that his grandmother always said, they they would rather go to the pearly gates late than uh, arrive at the pearly gates late than not at all. Right. There we go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> so. I, I probably messed it up. I have to get it better. I'll come back next week. But we know point, we know what you meant. We know what you meant. Yeah, my whole point is I have on what I call a win one with my coach. And I had three, I kid you not, I have on there says I need to write three grateful journal entries. I'm in a group. We, we post our gratefuls in the morning. I have a tickler uh, at noon for me to do my gratefuls. I've been ignoring it for days now, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm supposed to end the night with gratefuls. And before I came on here and Neva said to me, Nicole, why aren't you on um, Emirate? And I was like, well, I was talking to a client, but then I'm, I, I called in. And right before that, I was thinking, you know what? You need to write in your gratefuls. And then all of a sudden you guys are talking about it. I'm like, whoa, whoa. So... Um, the first lady who came on, she said it so well and expressed all of it. It's like when you're grateful for things, it expands. What you focus on expands. You know, when you're grateful for things, you look for just a little bitty things, you find more things to be grateful for. Uh, I'm just thankful that I got back on the call today because like Hall Holiday said, you weren't there after Mega Camp, and everybody got off. <laughs> got off, so I I could talk to you guys for the rest of the night. I am very thankful to have come on right on time to hear you talking about gratefuls, which confirmed that I need to get my behind back in my grateful journal. Get in that grateful journal. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Anybody else? So yeah, we, we at that time, I, I trust that this was really good for you guys. It was good for me. Um, it just, and again, we got we really have to focus on what are we grateful for? Because grateful bring abundance and a brand, abundance brings that open mind uh, of endless possibilities. So be grateful, grow your business, be grateful, get more money, be grateful, grow your relationships, be grateful, become healthier. At the end of the day, just be grateful. Just be grateful, it's as simple as that. The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses 
providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, real estate, and programming guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Homebuyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introductions. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, The Power Is Now program guide e-magazine, The Power Is Now national e-magazine, article writing and blogging, social media content customization, inclusion and press releases, graphic design services, business and performance coaching, technology support, referrals, lead generation opportunities, and management support.